Ladies and gents, welcome to G Reaction, and this is the Warrior Kingdoms of the Weaver Ants. Okay, by the channel Kuzgazat in a nutshell. Yeah, this is a bit different video from this channel. Uh, usually, you know, I see you know space or anything like that related topic, but I don't know. I haven't seen all the videos from this channel, so you know this might be normal thing. He he might be you know making videos like this about animals and things. So yeah, even though I like to think my, you know, scientific knowledge is vast in different fields, biology is not one of them, so I probably won't know much about this. And that's why it's going to be fun for me to react to it, because I will probably learn a thing or two. Yeah, remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction, there's a link in the description, check out the cards for the place, check out the end cards. And yeah, this is Kuzgazat video, so this might get blocked, so I have to put checkered box there, but I guess we'll see. Let's watch this one. Deep in tropical jungles lie floating kingdoms ruled by beautiful and deadly masters. They're sort of the high elves of the ant kingdoms, talented architects that create castles and city-states. But they are also fierce and expansionist warriors, and their kingdoms are ensnared in a never-ending war for survival. Oikofla weaver ants. Oikofla weavers walk on long legs. Yeah, it is astonishing to see all the different type of ants and how they behave, how they work together, how they create this, you know, kingdoms basically, you know, how they act, you know, how the response is because of their antennas. It's just, you know, surreal. ...have slender bodies and large eyes, which make them look pretty cute. Although their strong mandibles and the ability to shoot acid also make them pretty good at killing. But more on that later. Their colonies usually have two to three worker classes that vary dramatically in size. Majors, minors, and sometimes even tiny minim workers. Depending on location and species, they vary in color from dark brown to emerald green. Other than their fancy looks, what makes weavers special is that they're in the kingdom building business. They like to build at pretty much all heights, starting in shrubs a few centimeters above the ground and up to 10 meters in the tree canopy. But they're not satisfied with ruling just one plant. Weavers will look for twigs or lianas that bridge the gap to other trees. Wait a minute, they actually jump like that? Because I don't know, man. As far as I've seen, and they basically stick to things. They don't like to jump like that. I don't know. What if, uh, you know, a wind comes and takes them away? I don't know. There's a risk, isn't it? And this is weird to see this all, you know, ant kingdom. You, you know, they are green, so they could stand on leaves. They are brown, so they could... This is on the terrain. This is so great. I'll, sometimes I like to think, we think they are so simplistic. But what if they communicate like us? They're, they're you know, clocking in jobs, I guess, from time to time. Okay, I, I'm going to job and the, the, the green ants go to the leaves and do their thing. <laughs> this is so epic. And expand to every plant they can reach. This way, colonies spread upwards and sideways through the treetops. The largest weaver ant kingdoms we know of occupy up to 1,600 square meters, around four basketball courts. What? A lot of ground to cover for tiny ants and impossibly hard to control. So, weaver ants construct dozens of nests scattered all over their territory, outposts to defend the kingdom, tubes or balls made from leaves and ghostly silk sheets. These masterpieces of high ant architecture are created by the weaver majors, the larger worker ants, which are responsible for the more dangerous jobs like fighting, foraging, and nest construction. To start a new nest, a major tries to bend different leaves in her surroundings into a tube. If one of the leaves is flexible enough, more workers will arrive to help. Chains of workers pull the leaf's edges together or reach across gaps and grab distant leaves to add them to the construction. While the bending and pulling is going on, other workers carry larvae from the closest nest to the construction site. Usually, ant larvae spin themselves a cocoon to protect themselves, but the weaver ant larvae give all of their silk to the colony as building material. So when the workers tap the larvae's heads on the leaf, they release their sticky thread like tiny, cute glue guns. This way, the workers sew the bent leaf onto itself so it won't unfold anymore. This creates a central chamber that... You know what? Wait a second. 
Or I just had to Google if this is a real thing we weren't or he's just creating fiction. This is real shit? What the hell, man? They actually take their love, their kids basically, and use them, whatever they just secrete out as glues, bind together leaves like this. What the hell? I didn't know about this. This is really, you know, intelligent shit right here. I mean, have, have there been studies on insects like this to check, you know, what are the level of intelligence, how they communicate? It's used as the basis for up to 300 more leaves that are wound around it. Together, they form little pockets and act as additional rooms for the new outpost. To make it even more cozy, minor workers use the larvae to weave additional floors and chambers. Oh, for the lower. Nests are usually constructed as barracks on the territory's borders or as storage for brood and food supplies. This way, the ants don't need to cross vast distances to the headquarters, but have soldiers close to any potential point of conflict. Apart from one special nest in the middle of the network, which is reserved for the queen and her guards. Here, she produces hundreds of eggs a day, which get transferred to suitable nests with brood chambers. So a colony is a network of little castles and moats connected by suspension bridges made from leaves, lianas and twigs. An established colony easily has half a million individuals that need to be fed. Fortunately, weaver ants evolved to have very close and beneficial relationships with their hosts, shrubs and trees. The tree gives the ants a home and access to sweet sap to drink. But maybe even more importantly, it allows them to cultivate cattle like aphids or caterpillars that produce honeydew for them. This would usually hurt a tree, but these insects belong to a small group of VIPs. Only a few selected neighbors and the ants' cattle are allowed on the fruit tree. Many other insects... All right, I, 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 they actually have cattle. What is this? How the hell I know, don't know about this? They create this kind of civilization, they have these posts. This feels like I'm watching the Lord of the Rings uh, movie or something. Seriously, man, I, sometimes I think the more we study these insects, the one day we might find out that they, they are really in small scale and they are somewhat intelligent like us or something. Because look at, look at this. They are building civilizations here. They are herding cattle. They're using glues to, you know, to bind together the leaves to create homes. I had no idea ants did this level of shit. Damn. And even larger herbivores are scared off, or even killed and eaten. So in most cases, the tree only has to tolerate acceptable levels of damage while being protected from more dangerous pests. The Weaver Ant Kingdom could be an ant paradise if there wasn't competition. Mostly from other kingdoms. Just like medieval humans, every queen seeks to conquer others and make their land their own. Controlling fertile Come land on, is man, the key really? to survive in the jungle. And if a kingdom loses too much of it, it shrinks. Is there going to be battle between two ant armies? This is ridiculous. And is overrun or starves to death. So expanding and defending their borders is critical to keep the colony alive. When a kingdom invades another, it first gathers an army of a few thousand mages who make their way towards the opposing colony. The goal is to steal a bit of territory and take it over. Stormtroopers are here. Defending weaver patrols quickly spot the invaders and immediately release an alarm pheromone. Some rush to the front <laughs> to defend, while others... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they actually have an alarm. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I'm pretty sure this is accurate because this channel, I highly doubt, creates bullshit. So, you know, this probably is accurate. So this is resembling so much with humans. They have pheromones, we have horns that we, you know, during the battlefield, we, you know, signal horns to let people know the, you know, opposing armies arriving. They have pheromones. Ugh. Others rush to the closest outposts for help, marking their route with pheromones. Whenever they meet other sisters, they jerk their bodies as if in a fight to signal them to follow the pheromone trail to the front line. At the site of battle, majors from... Yeah, that's equivalent to, you know, uh, the two people can't talk, but they just, you know, uh, so they re realize it's about fighting. <laughs> so they just run back, oh, okay, I get it, the fight broke out. Both parties raise their bodies, circle each other with mandibles wide open, and try to seize their opponents. 
If an ant gets a hold of her opponent, the victim is pulled into a group of allied mages and pinned down. The ants then rip the victim apart, clipping off antennae and legs and slicing open their abdomens. To slow down the advance of the attackers, the defending mages squirt formic acid over the battlefield to chemically burn their targets. This is soon answered. I think, I don't know if it's because of copyright or what, because that really missed a massive opportunity of playing Star Wars music here. If you look at this shit. One of their, you know, one of their uh, warriors got destroyed, so they are shooting, you know, air guns, shooting mortars, apparently. ...in the same way by the attackers. In the chaotic battle, both parties lose countless fighters on the increasingly acidic battlefield. After a few minutes, the backup from the outposts arrive, and the time window for a successful attack slowly closes. This is when the battle turns. The defenders slowly push back the attack party. They're retreating. In the end, the attackers can't keep up and have to retreat. For both parties, it was a costly battle. Is that going to be celebrated? The corpses lie piled up on the ground under the battlefield, and many ants are severely injured. The defending colonies' nests and brood are safe, though. The attacker's attempt to steal new, valuable territory has failed. For today, they'll try again soon. But the kingdom will be ready. For the high ants of the floating kingdoms, war is nothing special, it's just a fact of life. Because God as we know, damn. empires never ever have enough. And the weaver ants are ready to fight. This video is part three in a series that was developed with the support of Curiosity Stream. What? A subscription streaming service with thousands of documents. There are more like that? Damn, this was part three. I hope I didn't, you know, jump the gun. I didn't miss something. I'm really sure it's not going to be continuous. It's separate topics. Yeah, we all go to curiositystream.com for us because Gazar, this is an awesome channel. What did I just witness? How the hell I don't know about this? They are acting a lot like humans. I didn't know ants did that. I mean, I knew ants were somewhat smart, but not at this level. They are actually creating kingdoms. They are fighting wars. They are gluing things together to create things. They are basically using glue as we use cement or something. This was so awesome. They create floors and things. Oh, this is this, uh, it felt like you know I'm watching some kind of uh, you know Lord of the Rings movie or something uh, What is this Disney or something? What is it? Or Pixar one of them, you know should make uh, you know more uh, Ant kingdom type animation movie where they act like humans because apparently they already do and it would be accurate It would be accurate if they do that. It's not like oh look at that look at those You know insects and animals acting like humans isn't that cute in reality. They really do apparently Oh god, this is so good. I cannot wait for biology to advance at a higher level. So, you know, one day we might, you know, learn more things from ants like this and other animals like how intelligent they really are because I think we'll be surprised. This was great. All right, people, if you like Merrick Sunday, don't like and subscribe. Uh, check out the Merrick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast for the place. Check out the end card. And yeah, uh, you know, some guy, uh, you know, told me to react to this apparently. And, you know, I got to admit this was so awesome. So, you know, suggest to me any great different topics like this. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.